chicken. Right here I have a variety of chicken. I have both skin on and skinless chicken breast. And here are thighs and drumsticks. Okay, let's get started. So we want to have a nice, wide, heavy bottom pot. We're gonna turn our stove on to high. What we wanna do is have a nice crust to sear our chicken that does have skin on. So we're gonna let that go, warm up, and while that's warming up, since we have our chicken out, we can use our pre-made seasoning here of choice, or we're gonna make, once again, a good seasoning, okay? So it's just part, one part of cayenne pepper and salt, and then two parts, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, okay? Here I'm just gonna use this pre-made seasoning, okay? You guys know by now, it's my favorite. It's easy. Um, mine is, uh, has a little different taste, but it's very similar. So we're just gonna sprinkle evenly, okay? You can obviously do this also um, ahead of time, but it's, it's so quick. Okay, that's just one side, okay? While we're waiting for that and our pot is heated up, we're gonna go ahead and get some oil. This is actually oil that I saved from the top of a, a jar of brew. But of course, use um, whatever oil you have in ha on hand. Just make sure it's vegetable, canola, or an oil that can take high heat, okay? So here we have our pots getting very heated. So I'm just gonna take one, you can see uh, here, and two tablespoons, okay? And because we can hear that so hot, I have my extended tongs, okay? I'm gonna start with the chicken thighs first, okay? Those are a little thicker and they have the skin on. So I'm just gonna go ahead, you can hear the oil's already hot, and place those skin down, you know, the back of the chicken, uh, skin, on, skin on chicken doesn't always have all over. So here again, I'm gonna place that, okay? All skin down. You can see that pops up at me a little bit, okay? So I back up. Um, here, we're gonna get the drumsticks quickly in here, okay? And we wanna put that seasoned side down, okay? What we're gonna do once I get all the skin on chicken in the pot, I'm gonna come back and carefully season the other side, okay? And what we're gonna do is just let that sear for a couple minutes on each side, and we're just brown, basically browning our chicken, okay? We're gonna wait a couple minutes and let those go. In the meantime, we've spoken about having pre-chopped veggies, so I have my Cajun Trinity here. We have our bell pepper, celery, and onion. There we're gonna add, have pre-measured. That's only a half a cup of each, okay? And I like to have those veggies actually diced into just a small square, okay? We don't wanna um, always have to see huge chunks of veggies because I know some of us have picky kids and adults in the home. So uh, those are gone for a little bit, so I'm gonna just go ahead and flip those over slowly. Okay. And you should have a nice brown crust forming. And we just wanna rotate all of this chicken until each side has been browned, okay? Just be careful, like I said before, because it's actually, you know, the oil is hot, the pot is hot. So you see, we can see on this, we have a nice golden brown. So we just wanna get that on all of our chicken that has the skin on, okay? And we don't wanna overcrowd our chicken though, okay? So just make sure for however many pieces you have, that we're good to go and the chicken can um, have enough space to cook and everything aerates through, okay? 
So we're gonna leave those on the other side of the chicken for a couple minutes also. Your drumsticks, after that's done, you, want, you can go ahead and put any breasts that you have or skinless, boneless chicken in. Okay, that actually takes a shorter amount of time to cook. Okay, and we're just gonna get those in. And as we cook down, you know, we'll be a little more roomy in here, right? So we're going to put those breasts on. Both sides have been seasoned. Make sure that you season your chicken and any food before you actually put it on the, um, in a pot or in the grill, any kind of cooking surface because we want to make sure that that seasoning gets seared in, okay? You know how we are. And you know, that's my habit of not letting my food, just leaving it alone. I'm a little too lovely with the food, right? That's okay. So smothered chicken is a great dish for just a Sunday night dinner. Um, it's easy, it'll cook yourself itself when you really, really get to um, know cooking Cajun food you'll notice that really it's just the setup. Just the setup of starting to cook, starting to get everything um, seasoned and your flavorings in. And really you can just leave it alone. So even though some of our cooking time is a bit extended, you're really just setting it up. And the reward in the end is insanely great, right? So you wanna go ahead, those have browned pretty well actually on the other side. So I'm just gonna flip over my chicken breasts. My those do not have, um, I, my, my, my breast person in the house, you know, everyone's designated with the favorite pieces of chicken, right? So my, my breast uh, person, they are not a, a huge fan of chicken skin, so that's why I just went ahead and bought the other one. So now I'm again flipping over the chicken drumsticks. You know, it looks a little crowded in this pot, but I think it'll be okay. So I mentioned one person that doesn't, uh, you know, like the, the chicken skin. So, you know, fortunately we, we have it easier, shopping easier a little bit now, right? Where we can just kind of pick and choose what we want instead of getting a whole chicken. We don't have to cut it. Boy, we're kind of spoiled, right? Okay, so. I'm done with the flipping at least of the raw parts of the chicken, okay? And I'm going to tell you, this is actually a really good example of kind of having an overcrowded um, pot. So what I'm going to do is kind of an any mini miny mo right now. I'm going to take this actual breast, my, my huge breast, chicken breast. And I'm going to just go ahead and put it aside just for a couple seconds, okay? And what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this breast and cook it separately in a smaller skillet. And then just let it cool down and save it. And we'll just slice that up for like, you know, chicken salad for tomorrow. So you want to really give your food a chance to cook evenly, okay? So I'm doing I'm just kind of because this heat is really getting high, which is great. But I want to make sure I just have good browning on this chicken. So, you know, let it sit a little bit. We've already established I'm like kind of a little pokey and lovey with my food, but that's all right. So here, a little, you know, not and raw kind of taste perfection sometimes. So what we're going to do, I actually have steak right in the middle, right? So what I'm going to do is start putting my trinity in, okay? I'm going to lower my heat to medium. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my bell pepper. I always like to start with my bell pepper first because that's kind of like more firm. Okay? Then I'm going to get my celery. Okay, and that's all just in the middle right there. And then we have our onions, right? Okay, and that is our Cajun Trinity. Okay, what I'm gonna do is let those get in the oil. 
I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit with our seasoning, okay? And if you wanna measure, you know, you can go ahead and measure. I would usually use a half a teaspoon or one teaspoon. Um, the only time I use, you know, a lot of, lot of teaspoons is we're having just a huge dish like gumbo, red beans and rice where you're cooking a huge pot. Um, otherwise, you really don't eat much and you'll see if you, you know, get used to these types of seasonings, that it's just great. I mean, great, great. Okay, so now what I'm doing, our oil is still going, our chicken fat is rendered a little bit so we have some in there, okay? So we're gonna do is just move the chicken pieces around, make sure everyone has a little tasty taste of the um, Cajun Trinity around it, okay? So I'm gonna let that cook down some more, okay? Our pot's nice and friendly, everyone has room in here, okay? So we're gonna just go ahead and we'll have that cook out, finish cooking. Okay, so we're just gonna let that cook on medium for about, I'd say five minutes, okay? Your chicken won't be cooked, but that's about the time we need um, to just get a good sear on. And what I'm gonna do before I step away from that is just go ahead and raise the temperature a little to medium high. Okay, that's between medium and high, medium high. I don't know if it's legit, but that's what we're saying, okay? All right. So what we're gonna do later is go ahead and put some really good seasoned flour in cold water and that's how we're gonna get our gravy for our smothered chicken, okay? If you like a little more flavor, you can add some minced garlic at this point also, or garlic powder. Um, we had a really garlicky uh, lunch today, so I'm just putting a little bit um, in there. As you can see, standing by, I have a nice Cabernet. Um, I guess wine is not really used in Louisiana cooking traditionally, but um, we do have, you know, we make wine. My aunt used to make blackberry wine from flesh, uh, fresh blackberries. And, you know, as young children, we got to have a little sip, not much, just a little bitty taste. Um, that was, of course, a long time ago. So I can see my our veggies. Hey, hey. What we're gonna do is go ahead, wait a couple more seconds, and just kiss your chicken a little bit, just with a nice Cabernet. It doesn't have to be, you know, overpriced. You know, I would say just a third of a cup, you know, in there to just bring out some more flavor in your chicken. Um, that's a little French tip, I guess, huh? Oh, to Julia Child, but um, with French cooking, what we're gonna do is, um, I thought it was great to add the wine, and um, I do that sometimes in chicken, sometimes beef when I'm doing a good smother, but what I'm gonna do is like let that get in there and then cover, AKA smother our dish um, I wish you guys could smell that. It smells so good, like just like rich, rich, beautiful food. I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. It smells so good. My goodness, I'm surprised my little munchkins haven't run out and asked what's for dinner. Of course, I'm the smallest one in the house now, so um, here, I'm just cooking, and I really just wanted to smell it again. Oh my goodness, guys, seriously, please make this just one time. We're not, you know, two time consumed with it. Okay, so I'm gonna lower that. Remember that was on medium high, so I'm gonna lower it to medium. And what we're gonna do is get a little bit of water, okay? So while that's going, I'm just grabbing a cup, and yes, that's a coffee cup. Um, it doesn't matter, I would say we're gonna start with just, um, Let's measure this out. 
So we don't want to ever have too much water. So here is one cup. So we're just going to hold this. Okay. And you can hear that's going. So one cup kind of mimic what we did with the wine. Just kiss it a little bit. And then here is, let's just make this even, okay? Obviously, I didn't learn my lesson for all those years of not measuring. Okay, two cups. <laughs> And when I wrote my cookbook, it, you know, it took me about seven years to really get it down. It's because, um, as they would say at home, you hard-headed, Sha, you hard-headed. That means, you know, we've all heard hard-head. And Sha is supposed to be an endearing term, a term of endearment. Um, share, love, share. It's C-H-E-R, but sometimes we pronounce it S-H-A. So that's Sha. And Sha is... A universal term so it also can be used with fussing so that's one two cups boo boo and we're at three cups so that seems like a solid amount here and we're just gonna let that sit and we're gonna actually put that on high cover it and we're gonna smother that chicken down. You have your yummy Cajun Trinity, your onions, bell pepper, celery. They're like slightly caramelized. They're giving off that beautiful flavor and um, flavor. I can literally taste it, okay? I'm sorry, smell, beautiful smell. So they're giving off that smell. You know it's good. I know it's good because I've cooked this a lot. Um, and then we have our wine that gives us a little, I don't know, smell of heaven, right? Those combinations, and then we have our really beautifully seared chicken. So um, we're just gonna let that go, okay? We're gonna bring it up to a boil, and that's gonna take a couple minutes at least, but um, well worth the wait. And you can start thinking about what sides in the meantime you wanna serve with this. So I usually just serve it over White rice, the smothered chicken will make a gravy in the end um, for you to put over your rice. And um, we're big fans of rice and gravy, by the way. That's one of the introductory foods um, when you're growing up as a, I don't wanna say a baby, but you're getting into that toddler age. Rice and gravy is definitely a Cajun staple. Um, we really enjoy it. It's a simple uh, dish. And basically, I don't know any kids that didn't grow up on rice and gravy in Louisiana. So, um, hello. That goes for a lot of other yummy, just Cajun food. So, we're well aware um, of flavors since we're just like little. Okay. So, we're just going to keep bringing that to a boil. I'm going to peek. Don't peek so much, okay? Do as I say. Not as I do when I'm cooking sometimes, but I'm, I'm gonna get used to, you know, following my own rules. Sorry, guys. That is actually boiling. I mean, you kind of have to peek a little bit, right, to see what's going on. So that is actually coming to a boil now. I'm just kind of stirring it around. We have a beautiful flavor. Okay. Okay, so now that I've brought that to a boil, what I'm gonna do is lower it to a low medium, cover it back up, smother it, and then we'll let that cook for about 45 minutes. And um, after 20 minutes, halfway through, we're going to come and check and make sure our water level is still okay. Okay, see you in a bit. Hey guys, so I'm back and it's been about 45 minutes. I'm gonna lift our lid and here we have a nice chicken done well. And what I'm gonna do is just raise that temperature from the medium low to a high, okay? And I just wanna kinda go ahead and crisp that skin back up, okay? And we can 
definitely boil some water down back down okay so at this point your chicken is really nice and tender you've checked on it everything's you know been going well i'm just kind of turning it around so what i've done in the meantime i have three tablespoons of flour that i've seasoned with our creole seasoning okay and that is going to be the end of our creole seasoning for the day i have some black pepper here that i'm going to sprinkle after we finish our gravy okay so as that's boiling down we want to make sure there's still a nice amount of water in here because that's what's going to make our gravy okay all right so what i'm doing is making a little space in the middle that's a good high heat just going going and so i have my like i said my three tablespoons of seasoned flour and what i'm going to do is just fill that up with about half a cup of water then i'll stir it in and you want to use cold water so nothing happens with the flour okay and we're just going to carefully stir that in until it's smooth and what i like to do with my smothered dishes this is a little bit um just for coloring purposes so this is um this gives a little bit of taste it's another kind of seasoning it's called kitchen bouquet browning and seasoning and whenever you're um sometimes when you're browning chicken you can go ahead and use this at first and it just gives the coloring and a little um it has a distinct flavor and um i like to use it in my smothered dishes when i'm doing uh smothered either chicken or pork chops so i just i'm a fan of a cap <laughs> so i just put a cap and a half actually of that that's going to give us a nice color um because we're not actually you know this is would be almost considered if it were you know made in a different order like a little roux you know roux is just really a thickener you know but this is actually just to go ahead and thicken um to make our sauce for our smothered chicken okay so like i said that's nice and going on high and then we're just going to slowly add slowly slowly because we don't want it to clump in okay so we'll slowly add that in you can see it's nice and smooth make sure if you have any leftover flour that didn't get integrated that that does not go in the pot okay so we're just going to keep stirring and we'll form our nice gravy slowly but surely okay we don't need to rush it so it'll work out just fine boy i tell you what this chicken is super tender so we're just gonna let that go it's still on high but as you can see it's getting much um a little thicker much quicker than we um could hope for so that's great and it should stay it's a very smooth liquid as long as you're using like i said cold water and um, have the flour in first and we'll be adding the water to the flour okay so just go ahead season it first um our little kitchen bouquet sauce gave us a nice brown color okay so we're just gonna let that keep going no so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and take a look at the actual Pan, okay with the chicken okay so we can see our gravy is actually thickening really well I'm just gonna keep the chicken moving you know so nothing sticking we have our skin and if you really sometimes what I do actually to just kind of get extra extra crisp skin after this is smothered is go ahead and transfer it to a baking sheet and put it under the broiler 
for a couple of minutes and that actually gives a nice nice super crisp skin um more than the pot could ever just because you know we already have liquid in here and we know what happens when we put liquid on something crisp it turns into a softer crust so as you can see we're coming into our gravy and what I'm gonna do actually is just go ahead and do a quick example of what I'm talking about to crisp up your skin if you like a just a, a better uh, presentation and a nice crust on your chicken baking sheet and I'm just going to take some of these chicken pieces as you can hear it's still on high because it's just blowing up and you see they're nicely done so I'm going to lower actually this temperature now it's back to my low medium while I get these uh, thighs out and our breasts will actually stay in because those were skinless to begin with Just the smell of the wine is still lingering. It's so fabulous. Wow. You can see our chicken is almost off the bone, but not quite, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly just go ahead and, you know, spread them out. Like I said, this is gonna do. Now I do have one that actually doesn't eat the chicken skin either, but it, there's no, you know, uh, skinless drumsticks. And they, she does like drumsticks. So anyway, so I'm just gonna make sure the skin is here on top. As you can see, some of our chicken has fallen off the bone, but it's just that tender. And I actually ended up putting that other chicken breast back into my pot, it seems like my chicken shrunk a little bit. So here you can see though, here's some nice gravy that's gonna go on top. It's still cooking. Okay, so we're just gonna actually go ahead and pop this chicken in the oven under the broiler. And we'll just have that done for um, just a few, a few minutes, okay guys? Okay guys, so we had about three minutes, a little over three minutes under the high broiler. Okay, and you can see our chicken is nice. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn the stove off and I'm going to just go ahead and transfer this chicken back into my pot. And then how we're going to serve this is just nicely over rice, just with some fresh or frozen veggies, guys. You know, corn works, broccoli works. Um, so we don't want everything we eat to be heavy. I, I know some people do actually, and I have done this before, um, you know, if you're been, I guess, working out a bit, go ahead and, you know, you can do macaroni and cheese as the side. That's some definite. And I'm just going to pour some gravy back over. Okay, so that's the definite way to go. But here is your smothered chicken. Just a little extra crispy tip with a quick broil over. Okay, so we're just going to take one and plate it on up, okay? So here's just a thigh we're gonna place over rice and then what we're gonna do is just pour a little gravy over okay however much gravy you know your family likes in their dishes and then we'll go ahead and just garnish with a little parsley 
and we'll serve with, go ahead and serve with um, just some fresh veggies, like I said, okay? Um, the gravy does thicken as it goes, so if you wanna just go ahead and wait a little bit before you serve, that works also. Okay, hope you guys enjoy. Bye.